video is just a really brief intro to P1 transduction. There's going to be a guide online that explains in great detail all the different volumes and ingredients needed to do this. Uh, and you should definitely check that out. But the idea here is that uh, P1 transduction helps you take uh, changes in the genome of one strain of E. coli and move them to another strain of E. coli. So in particular for doing gene knockouts, it's one of the best techniques out there. Uh, so what we're going to do today is show just how you can make a donor phage stock by adding P1 phage to some donor cells. So the very first thing is in the incubator from last night. I'm going to grab the, um, the donor strain that I got um, from freezer stock. In this case, I'm trying to make a Rec A knockout, um, so that would remove the recombinase gene in E. coli. So I have here a little uh, thick culture of Rec A with the can resistance marker cassette in it. Um, and this is grown overnight. And I'm just gonna start a new culture of this because when you add the P1 phage, you want your cells to be very young, so very early exponential stage. So what I've done is I've already prepared five mils of LB broth with a little bit of glucose and some calcium chloride. The calcium is necessary for the infection to occur. Um, and I also have the can antibiotic in here. So now I'm just going to simply do a 1% inoculation of the new culture and it's very critical that the OD for this be watched closely and that P1 phage be added when the OD is around 0.15 or 0.25 basically between that range so that should happen in about half an hour uh, between half an hour and one hour. So we'll keep an eye on this and check back in about an hour.